So, do you know who voted, which coach voted you in the top 25? I don't know. I'm probably I'm guessing maybe guess. somebody we played. I don't know. You know how this stuff goes. I don't. Um, somebody mentioned it to me. Um, I don't know if Gary votes in the deal or not. It wouldn't surprise me if he was saying yeah, it goes. Uh, little showmanship, you know how this stuff goes. You said after the game you were proud of the victory and proud to be three and zero, but there were still things obviously you'd like to see cleaned up and improved. Now that you've looked at film, what are some of those things yeah, you'd like I mean, to see? There's a lot. I mean, obviously, um, you know the the kicking deal still hasn't been good for us. I mean, we've had it's just kind of been one thing after another. I, I do think that we're headed to a good spot. We've, it's interesting, though. You know, we're, we're, we get low at our guards and people are jumping over us, and that's kind of how. You know how people are doing it, so you know we've got to figure out figure out a way to combat that. And so what happened was they saw it on film. Everybody starts doing it after somebody successfully does it to you. So that's kind of been our issue. I didn't feel like the, the kicking uh, was off or the snaps or any of that kind of stuff. It was just more about our operation. So we got to get that cleaned up, and then we've got to you know uh, got to just execute a little bit better on offense. You know, it's it's funny. I. You know, I felt like we played okay in the football game, you know, offensively, and came out of the game. I think we had 639 yards. Um, it was the third highest total in school history. Um, you know, they've been playing football here for a long time, and I, I, you know, and I felt like we had an okay game. And that's the defense that held Wyoming to 220 yards, I think, or 240 yards the week before. Um, and so, you know, I, I, you know. Coming off the field, I didn't feel great about it. Going back and looking at the tape, I felt like our offensive line really played well the second half. But we just got to, you know, come on. We turned the ball over three times. Obviously, we can't do that. Um, you know, we missed a couple of tackles defensively. We tackled better, but it still wasn't what we need to do quite yet. We gave up, um, you know, quarterback scramble. We lost contain a couple of times. Got to do a better job containing the quarterback. I mean, just some things that we can improve on and, and things to emphasize and get better at. Patrick was just saying that you all, he feels you all are better equipped to handle a game against TCU this year, do better than you did last year, perhaps win. How Do you agree with that, and how would you articulate how much better equipped you all are? For this? Yeah, I, mean, I think we're just a better football team. I mean, I don't, you know, I think we're a better football team for all our opponents, not just for this one. And so, um, you know, I think our guys are playing better. We're playing with more confidence, playing faster. There's a better understanding of the scheme. You know, we have more depth than we had. And so I think we're just, you know, we're just a year better than we were last year. and and. Uh, more mature, and as I said, you know, I think we're just a bigger, faster, stronger team, and, and team that's playing with some confidence. Um, and so, you know, that's what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we just keep getting better and improving. How is Shevin doing? And also, a guy like Jamie Sackville, what, what's kind of his situation with the team right yeah, now? Yeah, Jamie had an off-season surgery, and he's just kind of probably going to redshirt this year, okay. and then we'll kind of, you know, see where we go from there. Uh, Shevin's fine; he'll be back. He'll practice uh, full contact uh, Tuesday, and should be good to go. Uh, he's been a little banged up, but, but you know, we expect him to get back and get going. When you rattle off these three straight wins to start the season, you're talking about how confident of a group you are. How much does that play into it? Obviously, they're doing what you're telling them to do, and they're seeing the benefits. Of it. Yeah, I think I think year one, there's always a little bit of a, uh, a feeling out period. I mean, the coaches are trying to get to know the players. The players are trying to get to know the coaches. You know, they're trying to develop a trust between between each other. It's a different scheme. It's a different way of doing things. It's always different. So it usually takes some time. I mean, I always say it's an 18 month kind of feeling out process that happens. And I think our guys are a little ahead of schedule that way. I mean, I think we're, you know, uh, I think Kaz and his staff have done such a good job in the weight room of just building a culture. Um, I, I really like our coaching staff and the way that the guys interact with the players. And, and I think our players are comfortable with, with what we're doing. You know, everything from nutrition to, to certainly the strength training to the scheme to, you know, the way we handle them and deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I think that everybody's in a good spot right now. And, when that happens, you know, the guys perform better. How much do you enjoy a game like this where obviously you and Gary aren't on the field, but you're calling the shots and it's a good friend of yours, a guy you know so well. Do you, do you enjoy that kind of atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, this is, it's funny, this is four weeks in a row I've played against uh, somebody that I consider to be a pretty close friend, you know, and it's just the way these things go. Um, uh, so, you know, I, you know, obviously Seth and I work together. Uh, Jake worked for me at Cal. We worked together. Um, you know, I've known Blake Anderson for a long time and I worked for Gary and that's just, that's just kind of the way college football is. I mean, we're all kind of interrelated to each other and intertwined. And, and um, you know, Gary is obviously one of the best coaches in the country. His track record, you know, speaks for itself. And, you know, when you get to compete against his teams, you know they're going to play hard. You know they're going to be tough. 
Uh, and I think that's one of the things that, that you know you get excited about is getting to test your team against a, a team that you know is going to be really solid and you get to perform at a high level. With TJ, what's I mean, what's kind of your, now that you've had a couple of days? You feel, I know the situation is kind of complicated. Do you feel yeah. like he's going to redshirt? Do you feel like he's no? We'll level? see. I mean, the good thing is we got four games to figure it all yeah. out. So it's it's not a you know the thing with him that I told I told our players this the other day. The the reason TJ played is because. You know, he deserves to play based on how he performed, uh, you know, during practice. And he was down there with the scouts, and, you know, you just watch the film week after week and day after day, and, you know, he just stood out. I mean, the way he practiced, the little things he did, you know, and, and I thought, well, when he gets an opportunity in a game, you know, I think he'll do something special with that opportunity. And, you know, and he did. He showed up. And so we'll, we'll play him this week, get him in the rotation, see how he does this week, and then, uh, and then make a decision. You know, the good thing is we have two good young running backs who we both – you know, that we like a lot, both uh, you know, TJ and Ulysses both. And, and they're, you know, different style of backs, but they're both really uh, really good, really effective. And, and so, you know, we'll try to balance those two guys out and see, you know, see how it goes from here. Patrick said he doesn't notice a lot of buzz right now because he just doesn't, he stays focused and doesn't really look at social media and stuff right, like that. Right, right. But you as the head coach, I mean, can you sense the um, excitement going up around campus or on campus because of this start? Yeah, I mean, I think so a little bit. I mean, I think... You know, look, I think, you know, it's, um, you know, building a fan base takes some time. I mean, it really does. And, and it's it's not one of those things, you, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't pop out a new uniform and all of a sudden 10,000 fans show up. I mean, that's just not how it works. You've got to, it's something that's a slow process. You, you do it, you know, you do it year after year. You're successful. You, you're entertaining. People, you know, like the brand of football that you play. And so, you know, they buy a ticket and they come to the game and, and they keep coming back. And I think that's... That's what we want to do. We want to just continue to, to improve our program, and, and it's like anything else. You know, Dallas will follow a winner. You know, they always have and they always will. And, and so we just have to give them a consistent product to, to like and to follow and to appreciate. And, and the more that we do that, the more people will start to show up, and, and the more, you know, the, the stuff will take care of itself. In years past, there have been some coaches who have almost downplayed the significance of the game. Obviously, it's a crosstown game, but identify it as a non-conference game and others who say this is bragging rights this is recruiting wins how important is TCU game to you yeah I mean I think for us you know we've I, I think we've played you know three pretty good football teams you know what I mean and you go and you say well Texas State's 0-3 and you say yeah you know you look at who they've played against you know what I mean and, and you look at the, the game against Wyoming if you study it closely it's 14-3 get ready to be 21-3 and they throw a pick six and so you know, and that's the same team that beat Missouri the week before, you know. Uh, and so, um, uh, for us, you know, you get a chance to play against a team that's in the top 25, uh, against a team that's, a, that's in the Big 12. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a good opportunity for us. Um, but at the same time, I mean, look, you know, we're going to play really good teams in our conference, you know, and, and uh, we're going to play, there's going to be three or four teams in our conference that will end up being ranked. And so this is not the only ranked team we're going to play this year. Um, you know, and, and our, our goal is not to, you know, upset TCU. Our goal is to play for a conference championship and win a conference championship. And so, you know, uh, we'd like to beat TCU along the way, without a doubt. But, you know, I have the same goals and aspirations that Gary does. I mean, Gary wants to win the Big 12. You know what I mean? And, and then we want to do the same thing. We want to, we want to win the American Athletic Conference. And so, um, you know, we play TC, TCU in a non-conference game. And so it's, it's a big deal, without a doubt, you know, because it's a – it's a top 25 team and it's a good football team and we get to we get to it's a measuring stick for us to see how far we've come in a year and how much we've improved and and you know and it gives us some credibility you know I think that you know there's a pretty good chance that Arkansas State might win their conference championship there's a pretty good chance that North Texas might win their conference championship um, there's a pretty good chance TCU might win their conference championship and so you know it's we've, we've played against you know quality teams so far and and uh, it's just another game against a good quality team. Duggan may have separated himself a little bit by the way he played against Purdue. Gary's certainly not going to tell us that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So is, is life harder when you don't know? Is it Delton? Is it Duggan? Is it both? Yeah, you, you prepare for both. I mean, the thing is, you know, the, the scheme's really not that much different. I mean, Duggan is a good runner. Uh, when you put, put the film on that, uh, you know, I, I didn't know that much about him as a player, and I was surprised really how fleet of foot he is. I mean, he can really run. He's athletic. Um, and so... The scheme doesn't really change that much. Um, you know, there's little nuances that, that change here and there, but but you got to be prepared for both, and you got to be prepared for, for both sets of plays, and and because uh, you know I'm sure at some point we'll see both of them, and uh, you know, and I thought 
I thought the quarterback position grew a lot last week. You know, you look at week one, uh, and then you look at, you know, after an open date, you look at the, the second game against Purdue, you know, the quarterbacks looked a lot more comfortable, and, and uh, you know, the execution was a lot better. You mentioned that Brandon was put on scholarship last week. Was that, so what's kind of, the, what's, what's his deal? Uh, was he not on coming in? Or what's that? Brandon Stevens. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so basically what he did is he, you know, contacted us and said, you know, I'd like to come basically try out. Yeah. And if I'm good enough, then, you know, I can potentially earn a scholarship. And so, you know, he's got two years of eligibility still, and so we'll count him on, you know, next year's recruiting class. And he's a non-recruited walk-on and earn a scholarship. Do you and Gary ever text each other during a season? Not when you're playing each yeah, other necessarily, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah, no, we do. Yeah, we stay in touch, I mean, for sure. Um, you know, I would. We'll, we'll talk after the game. We don't do a whole lot before. I mean, it's just kind of... You know, just kind of you know, don't do that. But but then after the game's over, I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a lot more interaction than there has been up to this point. Do you have any injury updates you can share? No, not really. Uh, you know, Harrison Loveless is still. We're still waiting to kind of see the extent of his injury. Um, and really, beyond that, we're pretty healthy. Kevin. Kevin. Robledo. We'll see. Yeah. yeah well, he'll kick tomorrow. We'll kind of get a better idea where he's at. And Kiki. Uh, probably won't be back this, this week. Yeah, probably one more week. And he'll